Hey, today we've just got a quick video for you, more of an update really to the YOLO Live YOLO box. I reviewed this a few months back and it's a great all-in-one multi-input live streaming workhorse, that's a mouthful, with a seven inch touchscreen monitor. It works as a switcher, as an encoder. You can multi-platform stream without anything additional over a wired or wireless connection like I'm using today. You can even record your streams to an SD card. Anyway, at that point, the software was easy and intuitive, but they've redesigned it and added even more. So I wanted to go through the new user interface and features today. So let's get into it. All right, so if you have one of these, you'll already know this, but if you don't, updating firmware is literally the easiest thing you could ever do. Uh, if you're connected to the internet, just turn it on. It will tell you there is a firmware update available and you just click OK, the end. So once you're up to date, this is your basic home screen here. You can just tap this little icon, the little user icon in the corner, and that will bring you to this page with all of your uh, connection details and your accounts and things like that. So you're gonna get all this set up the same way as you would have in my first video. So this is the main page where you're going to uh, create live streams or manage your past live streams. As you can see, I have a bunch of past ones here. Just hold your finger down for a few seconds and it will let you delete them uh, if you want to do that. But we're going to go ahead and create a new one today to show you all these different things that they've updated here. Click the plus to create a new live stream and you can give it a title, a description, and you can even schedule it if you want to. And when you click create, it's not going to start streaming yet, so don't worry. Now you can see that live stream which we just created with a little continue icon, unlike the finish icons on the past live streams that have of course already finished. So just tap that and it will bring you into the main user interface. So this will be the main screen that you see when you're streaming. And this is what was majorly updated in the newest firmware, including some awesome features like finally being able to see comments on YouTube and Facebook from right within here, making it an even more independent streaming command center than it already was. So of course, let's go through it in more detail. First off, you can touch here in the corner of the screen to fill out your view if that's all you need. And you can still access uh, most settings from at the bottom here, or you can minimize your actual screen and see all those controls and everything in the area outside of your image. Even when you're in the full screen mode, some things will cover up your image, for example, choosing your platforms or getting your audio level set up, but there are some things that you can do without really covering your image, for example, switching between your different inputs or uh, choosing your overlays, for example. Anyway, you get the idea. Now, before diving any more into these settings, you can also see a few other things around the screen that I want to bring to your attention too. So one of those is the audio meter up here in the corner, which is updated from my original video. Basically before, this was just an icon to let you know if audio was coming in or not, but it wasn't an effective levels meter. But now we have a much better representation of our actual levels with the traditional yellow uh, warning area and red clipping zone. So you can set your levels appropriately. We'll talk more on how to do that in just a second when we're going through each submenu. Another thing is that you have this button on the side, which looks kind of like a record button, uh, but that is actually what you'll push to start and stop live streaming. Speaking of that, within the same live stream event that you created on Yolo Box, when you start and stop again, you can continue within that same live stream on YouTube. It will just start back up again, but Facebook will completely create a new stream on your timeline. So just be aware of how that works. It's just Facebook and there's nothing really that Yolo Box can do to get around that, at least at the moment. And there are some things that you do need to stop the stream to change. For example, like changing your resolution, which you can do by tapping up top here where it says 1080p. So just make sure that you get those things sorted out before you start, especially if you are streaming to Facebook, to avoid having a bunch of separate streams on your page. One more thing that may not be immediately obvious is this little uh, video camera icon up in the top corner here. And if you tap that, it will first of all tell you how much space you have remaining on your SD card if you have one in there. And then you can start recording. And what this is going to do is just record your video to your uh, SD card. And that's going to be the same video that you're live streaming. It's going to be the same quality as you have set for your live stream. So for example, if I click start recording here, it will show me the time that I've been recording up top that's recording to the SD card, uh, whether or not I'm live streaming, which I'm not right now. 
And again, I'll show you that video in this review video so you can see how it looks. But basically, that's just going to be the same quality video as you'll get from your live stream, again, recorded to your card. So if you switch cameras or anything like that, if you put overlays on it, anything like that, that will all be recorded to the SD card. Anyway, on to the more detailed settings and features. You have six main tabs or options for different settings in either full screen mode like we're in right now or this picture in picture type of view. You've got your overlays, you've got your platforms, you've got your volume or audio settings, you've got a scoreboard page there, you've got your comments, and you've got your more general settings. You can also see down here your different sources. Right now I've got two HDMI sources with little previews down there. And if you click add video source, you can add, of course, two HDMIs. You've also got a USB input for a webcam or something, but with a cheap adapter, you can also make that work with an additional HDMI input. Plus you've got video you can take from your SD card if you have some loaded on there. And you also can uh, load in another live stream in here. Plus you've got your options for picture in picture video right here. Click that, you can choose your first main screen. Click it again, and from the remaining sources that you have loaded, you can choose your sub screen. Uh, you can just scale it right here. You can see down in the bottom corner, you can scale how large that is. If I go really large, uh, you can then move where you want it to be positioned. Uh, even if it's small, of course, you can then move how you want it to be positioned. And uh, that's all there really is to it. Click done and you've got your picture and picture source down there as one of your sources in your switching interface. We might as well load up some SD card video as well. So if I click SD card, you can see the things that you have loaded onto your SD card previously. I have two of these which are actually the same from my original video. Let's choose one here, click done and then that will load in there as a third source that you can switch to. Also, if you have something like the Atom Mini here, you can use this together with the uh, Yolo Box, for example. Usually you need to use this together with a computer or something to uh, live stream, and this will just let you uh, take multiple sources and it will switch them for you. You've got some options, for example, transitions and whatnot, but you do usually need a computer. It's not an all-in-one streaming sensor like the Yolo Box is, but you could take the HDMI output and plug it into the Yolo Box and then switch your cameras on here and you have even more inputs on this plus a lot more options for things like transitions and stuff all in this one you know physical control center that then can stream from your uh, yolo box to multiple platforms at the same time which is a great combination so now starting from the first of these little settings tabs here you've got your overlays you can pre-make and load up some overlays like lower thirds the scrolling text and other graphics so that way when you're live streaming you can quickly turn them on and off and then to delete old ones from this menu just like everything else here just hold it down for a few seconds and you've got the option to delete it right there to add Add in a new overlay here, just click the plus and you've got options for image overlays and lower thirds. These image overlays will come from, again, your SD card things that you have loaded in here and they can be uh, PNG transparent PNG files, uh, which I've got there. And then you can see you can move it wherever you want on screen. This is really big, so there's not much space to move it. You can uh, scale it and get it set up wherever you want. And if you are changing these settings, during a live stream, they will not show up on your live stream until you click done. So you can kind of get it set exactly how you want it, your scale, your position, then click done. And if it's active within your live stream, it will then update in that image, not before. In your lower thirds options, you do have a few choices with and without color, as well as your scrolling text. The color of these is not currently editable, unfortunately, uh, so you're stuck with this kind of hot pink. But that should be changed at some point in the future. I don't know exactly when, and I do hope it's soon, but for now, this is what you've got. Once you select one of these lower thirds, you can then, of course, customize it. You've got your title and your subtitle. Uh, you can see here a sample which does tell you, please enter a subtitle with up to 20 words. So the subtitle is on top, as you can see. Keep that in mind. Uh, pay attention to that when you're entering these different things. So for example, my title, click there. Let's enter my name. My name is Scott. I accidentally put that on lowercase, but whatever. You can click next to jump into the uh, subtitle, or you can click the arrow, um, and that will bring you to the subtitle. So let's say really cool. <laughs> and click the check or again, click done. You can see it here and then you can adjust, for example, the offset of these if you want them to be not lined up exactly perfectly. You can adjust the scale to make them larger or smaller and then you can just grab it and uh, adjust exactly where you want it on screen. So simple enough. With your rolling captions, it's a little bit different. You've got your one line of text up to 100 characters. You can again choose the scale. You can adjust where you want it to be on screen, uh, but then you can also select if you want it to repeat 
the scrolling captions or if you want it to only scroll through once and then just finish and then you can turn it off and on again if you want it to scroll once more but you do also have that option so it's a little bit different from the other lower thirds so now from these lower thirds and these overlays that you've preloaded into here just tapping them will turn them on and off as you can see and you can turn on multiple things all at the same time so if you want scrolling text and a lower third and a image overlay all at the same time uh, it's kind of madness at this point but you can do that so just tap them to turn them on or off holding down on any of these will as we said let you delete them or you can also go in and edit them and again keep in mind that these edits will not show up until you click done so next up is the platforms menu and the process for getting connected here should be pretty straightforward but we've shown that in my first review video and once you've got your account linked it's as simple as toggling them on or off when you turn on youtube you have some options if you want it to be public unlisted or private for now we're going to select unlisted and click done With Facebook, when you toggle it on, you do have a few more options. You can post it to your timeline, which is your personal page. You can post it to a page you manage, and if you manage more than one page, you can choose which one you want down here, as well as a group. If you control a group, you can select one of those. If you are sharing it to your own timeline, you can also select if you want it to be visible to the public, to friends, or to only me, but that is not an option when you uh, share it to a page that you manage. So for today, just for the purpose of this, we're going to share it to my own timeline and we're gonna keep it to only me. And then click done and it will go ahead and get that linked up. You've also got options for Twitch and custom RTMP, uh, but again, we're not gonna go through all those details. In your volume menu, you've got options for adjusting the level when you're monitoring the audio with headphones. Uh, you can switch that right there, which I'm not doing right now. And then for the audio input, the audio you're using, the audio you're hearing, you can select uh, automatic, which will follow the HDMI source. So if you're selected on HDMI 1, it will take the audio from HDMI 1. If you're on HDMI 2, it will take that audio automatically. It will follow it. And keep that in mind, because if you have it set to that and switch over to SD card video, for example, and you're hoping to talk over it, it's not going to take your audio. It's going to be yeah, showing the audio from that SD card video. So if you want the audio to remain a consistent source, whether it's from one of the HDMI sources or if it's from your USB or your line in or keeping that audio from the SD card, your local video, you can select them manually. And then you can also adjust individually uh, the levels for uh, those individual sources. So next up is scoreboard. And this is really cool if you're streaming sports, for example. Uh, you can turn the scoreboard display on or off, of course. You can see it here. Uh, you can set, of course, the score for each team right there. You can change it as the score changes. Uh, you can also turn the time on or off, and then you have time control here. Uh, if you play it, uh, it'll show the time. It's really small, so you probably can't see it. Uh, but then you can pause the time if you want, if there's a timeout, for example, and start playing again. And then you can reset the time if you want to return to zero. You can also show the text for the period. Now, it's set by default to first half, uh, but you can actually set that just not from different options, but you can go in and manually choose what text it displays. So depending on the sport, if you have periods, if you have quarters, if you have halves, whatever you want to display, you can display that right there and you can customize it completely, which is nice. If you jump into the team info sub menu, you can go ahead and you can choose the game name. So uh, this is 2018 FIFA World Cup, but you can customize it, of course, to whatever game name, the event name that you're streaming is. You can set names for both teams and you can also set logos for both teams, again, loaded in from your SD card. At the moment, you can't change the colors for each of these teams. You got blue and red, and that's it. So in the future, I do hope, as well as the lower thirds, that you can customize the colors for the scoreboard as well. Next up is the comments page, and uh, I've got no comments in here right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the stream and then comment on my own stream so you can see how this looks. All right, so you can see those comments coming in here as I made them. It takes about five seconds or so between uh, actually entering them on the computer and it showing up in here, but uh, generally it's pretty quick and you can see as I go between tabs, I can see the name of the person who made the comment, which in both cases was myself, as well as the time that the comment was made and the comment. Uh, at the moment, you can't reply to comments from within here. Again, maybe that will come in the future, I don't know, but it is nice to be able to see them in here so you can then see questions maybe and respond to them within your live stream. And you don't have to have a computer if you wanna do that. So finally, we've got the settings page, which has a number of sub menus starting with video source switching mode. In this sub menu, you can choose if you want a simple click or tap to switch your source. So if I click done, you can see 
one tap will then change my source just like that. Or if you need to double click or again double tap to change your source so you can see if I can click down here, simple tapping it will not now change my source. I have to double tap and this is great if you're worried about accidentally changing your source too easily. In the SD card videos switching setting sub menu, it's a mouthful, uh, you have three choices for how you want the SD card video to act when you pause it or when you change back to a different source. You can pause it when switching and that will just pause wherever it left off uh, as you switch to another source and then when you come back to it, it will continue from that same point, which I'll show you right now. So you can see it's playing through here and if I switch back to this source, you can see the preview here showing exactly where it paused and then as I switch back to it, it continues from that same point. The second option is to resume first frame and pause when switching. So this will just jump back to the beginning of the video and again pause. So when you switch off of that source and back to it, it will then start again from the beginning. So let me select that and then go back to this source and you can see it jump back to the beginning in a little preview and if I go back to it, yes, we're back at the beginning. And if I switch off again, it goes back to the beginning and each time it will jump back to the beginning and pause and get ready for that next time you go to it. The last option is just to continue playing when switching. So that will just do nothing literally. So if I'm playing here and go back to a different source, you can see that the video continues down there in the preview. And when you jump back to it, it continues from wherever it is at that time. So it'll just continuously play in the background. Anyway, next up is SD card management and it's straightforward enough. You can see your SD card uh, memory, how much you've used and how much you have remaining. You can turn your HDMI loop through on or off if you are looping this out over HDMI to a larger monitor, for example. And then finally, you've got your video source transition menu. In that menu, we can choose a clean cut, a wipe, a translation or a window slice for how our video sources cut back and forth. And let's just quickly take a look at how each of those look. The cut is just a straight cut. It's what we've been doing the whole time. If we go over to wipe, as I switch sources, you can see it wipe across. Translation will then kind of slide both screens over at the same time and a window slice will look like blinds basically. There's no further customization of these transitions. It's pretty straightforward. And that's really all there is to it. This really has gotten easier and easier to use with more and more key functions like those comments and transitions added every couple of weeks. And I'm sure with those regular updates, we'll see even more in the future. Hopefully more customization of those lower thirds and maybe even some customization of colors on the scoreboard like we said, but it really doesn't get much better for an all-in-one streaming center than the YOLO box. However, if you have any other questions or comments, please do let me know down below and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.